Hey y'all, this is Ken and this is Three Things. Coming back, my video vlog that I uh, wanted to share with you just a little bit about some of the things that uh, are on my mind, on my heart. And they relate to things that enhance life and enhance home and enhance what you know about real estate. And today, there's a couple of notes that I made just that I wanna kind of refer to. So the first one is to talk just a little bit about life because there's been a number of things that have happened since I've been on. And as you can probably tell that I've been doing some more video shooting and editing and working on stuff that uh, trying to improve what I've been doing and trying to do better at what I have done in the past. And that's been a bit of a challenge. And part of that has been working on me. And as I do the work that I do now in real estate and applying the things that I did as a pastor, one of the things that keeps coming back to the conversation for me is listening and active listening, something that I taught at working with couples and still do. I'm still a counselor for couples when in marriage and pre-marriage counseling. Uh, I love doing that. And one of those things that, that I have to practice is the importance of listening. I think I've mentioned that one before. But one of the skills that sometimes we don't think about is how do we listen well? And if we don't understand what somebody says, how do we respond to that? You know, part of that is what we call active listening. And that's not listening to respond, but listening to learn. One of the ways that you can do that is a, a simple thing called mirroring. So when somebody says something to you, maybe, you know what, I, I've had a really rough day. Rather than just asking questions, um, oh, what's wrong, rough about your day? Nothing, I don't want to talk about it. Start by simply responding, a rough day? And just add that little bit of rough inflection to what you're saying and to the conversation. And listen, inquire. And if something comes up in the conversation, ask again, mirror. So, you know, somebody says something and you mirror back what they said. Because part of that is that opportunity for us. We we relate to people the same way. There's a great video that I saw the other day that my wife posted about two golden retrievers walking and they walk in sync. Um, I guess they're probably brother and brother, brother and sister, or sister and sister, I don't know. But you know, the, when we get with people that we relate to, we get kind of in sync. And that mirroring, we feel more comfortable. And that's part of what we want in relationships and listening to the people we care about is to be in sync with them. So as you practice active listening, that's just a little tool I just want to throw out to you, a, a way to improve that conversation and what you're saying to people. I have found it to be incredibly helpful in relationships as well as in my personal ones, but also my professional ones to just inquire and be attentive. Because the other part of that is to take the time to be silent to not say anything. And boy, we want to talk. When I do prayers as a pastor, many times I like to begin a prayer and ask everybody to be silent for a few moments. And one of the things that I've come to realize is that may be the only moment of silence that people have in the world during their week. We put so much noise in here. You're watching me, listening to me talk. We're watching videos. We're listening to music. We're just constantly going that those spaces allow our minds to work on things. So don't be afraid of silence and listen uh, to one another. Now, one of the things I also want to throw out is something in relation to home and something that for us has been very relevant this last week um, because uh, Sunday morning I got up and um, we have a, a, a great Pyrenees. Uh, Dibs, who has been part of our family, was part of my my wife's family, uh, long before we got married and um, was an important part of so many people's lives, this dog. I, I just have never known a dog to to be a person. You know, when you're 120 pounds, you kind of fit yourself into a family. But the nature of the breed of a Great Pyrenees, to be a protector, to be a herder, just always being attentive to the needs of the family. And so um, my wife and her sons grew up with them and their friends. And then I came into the picture. My son came into the picture. And so Div became part of our family. And he's been struggling with his health. And on Sunday, he was just the difficulties and the, the struggle he was having. We realized it was time to say goodbye. 
And that's really left a hole in, in our family, in our lives. And I want to throw that out to you because part of my story that I've shared here in the channel and my book, Life Sucks, Seek God, is all about grief and my journey through the loss of my wife. And I still talk about that. It's such an important part of things. And something that I want to share with you is the importance of pets in a home. And I know there's different limitations sometimes about having pets. But having that companion, having, um, even if it's plants, I mean, people talk to plants. I have some plants that I talk to. They've been around for a long time. Uh, the, but, but having that companion that is there, that can sense things. Um, Dibs wasn't a trained emotional support animal, but I can tell you he was an emotional support animal for us and for so many. And the value of having a pet, I, besides companionship, it, it's... Yes, it's somebody that's dependent on you, but it's also somebody that can sense things. It provides humor <laughs> a lot of times in our lives. Provides frustrations a lot of times. I can't tell you our other, our Carillion Berry dog you've seen. Sadie is now, I think she's over two years old, but she still chews on things. Ah, it drives me nuts how many shoes and things she's torn up and trying to to train her but she's the sweetest thing in the world and and scout that we've adopted and trying to help him fit in and our cats and and tango our cockatiel but yeah you know, i've had a fish as well they, they provide so much joy to a family's life but they also help us to prepare for um life uh, one of the things that I came to realize is particularly when there was such that that bent of uh, Michael Vick and the whole dog fighting thing is I, I came up with a theory, thought that I had, is that animals, pets have a way of helping us to be good human beings. They will teach us how to be better human beings. So as you think about things, think about having a pet in your life and how you can make that work because it really matters. So the last thing I want to touch on is real estate. And this is kind of a one of those things that just kind of help you, um, me as well, to just kind of talk about one of the things that people don't think about when you start the process of looking for a home, uh, whether that you are looking to buy or to invest in any real estate for your home or for investment is it's easy to get on a website and start to go through it and go, oh, I love this house, it's a beautiful house. But what about what's around the house? Sometimes that's not easy to do, especially when you're not here in Alaska. A lot of times people come looking in Alaska for a home. And one of the things that I wanna encourage you to do, particularly if you go to my website at Ken, dot alaskahomesearch.com you're going to get on there and if you get on the web page and any of our team you're going to find a bunch of webs you're going to find a bunch of pictures of homes in the area you want to look at and it's really easy to look at that picture click on it go oh, i want that house that's the one i want you look at all the pictures of the home but one of the features that that we have on our web page if you scroll down there's a map and that map is an interactive one you could do this also just do it on google um, earth is to go into that address, look at that home from above, and expand a little bit. Look around the neighborhood. Take a look at what's around the place. Because sometimes you can find out, you know, particularly some of our more remote properties, uh, even within the city, you might be able to find that, you, yeah, it's a great home, but um, right around there, there might be a, uh, a shopping center you don't know about. Somebody may have a bunch of used cars that may show up there. You can also get the front profile and look at the homes up and down the street without ever driving by. And there's a number of different sites I've shared on some other um videos that I've done, particularly my town tours. If you go look at the ones for living in Anchorage, uh, Wasilla or Girdwood or Palmer, you can find links to Dwellix and a couple of other sites that allow you to kind of get an idea of subdivisions, neighborhoods, about different things about the schools and what their ratings are and what people have to say about that. So those are just some things that, that I wanted to share with you today. Um, nothing edited here, nothing fancy, just me sharing a little bit about my life and 
kind of those things that, that I want to let you know that might help you enhance your life, enhance your home, uh, enhance what you know about real estate. And if you are looking to buy a home here in Anchorage uh, and looking at moving to Alaska, give me a call or email me. You can message me at my number there listed on the screen or my email. Uh, that'll be down in the section below. If you're looking at relocating, I've got a free relocation guide that I want you to be able to get. It doesn't cost you anything. Just click the link on that as well and we can get that out to you and I'm here in any way that I can be to help you. I hope you'll take a chance to look at some of the other videos that I have that are here for you and make sure if you get a moment to like, subscribe, and whack that bell icon like we do salmon every summer here in Alaska.